Hey guys, today I'm doing a power jack repair on an Acer Chromebook R11. This one came in with the classic symptom of being able to wiggle the power cord back and forth when you plug it in to get it to power on. And as you'll see in the video when I get it torn down, there's a little discoloration on that voltage pin where it's soldered into the motherboard. And that's what's causing the failure. And the first step here is the disassembly, and you want to remove all of the bottom screws. There's about 11 screws here that you need to remove, and then we'll take a pry tool and remove that bottom bezel. And I use a, a thin guitar pick for my pry tool to get these bottom covers off. And I just take that thin pick and I run it along the edge of that bottom cover, kind of in between the, the gap there. And that, that usually is enough to kind of get it started at one point, and then I'll take my hand and apply pressure like I'm doing right here. I kind of hold it up a little bit while I'm going around, and that usually helps get that thing off without damaging anything. And you want to be careful with this one too. If it's got a, uh, a cable connector that's connected to the the bottom cover so if you were to just take off that cover and just rip it out you rips off rip off one of the cables it's a little IO board that has a cable that's clipped into the motherboard so don't just go and take the bottom panel off you want to make sure you're careful once you get this thing undone and so here as you can see right there that little cable I'm just taking my fingernail and I'm just popping it up flipping it up it's like a flip up flip down lock connection so just for detaching that cable And the first thing I'm going to do here is remove the battery. It's always good to disconnect the battery first. You never know if this thing's in standby mode or sleep mode or something. So just make sure that you disconnect the battery when you're going to take it apart. So I just take my fingernail on each side of that connector and just kind of wiggle it out slowly. And this tape is holding that cable down, so you have to remove that keyboard tape too. And so now I'm just going to take these two screws out that are holding the battery down. And that'll come off. And here I'm going to remove the Wi-Fi card from the motherboard. You don't need to take out the leads. Um, they can be kind of tricky for people to get back off and on and off. So it just slides out, slides back in, kind of like a memory chip. And here I'm going to detach the speaker. I'm taking my fingernail on one side and my flathead on the other. And then I'm taking my flathead to pop up those connectors again for the touchpad. And the keyboard, same kind of thing. I'm taking my fingernail on each side and the screwdriver and pulling that back. And then there's a power button or a power light cable there. Here's the webcam. Just taking my fingernail on one side, flathead on the other. LCD cable. It's just a pull-up connector. Just holding the motherboard down while I pull up on it. And here I'm going to remove a couple hinge screws. There's, the hinge is folded over on top of the motherboard. So if you remove the hinge screws, you can open the laptop up a little bit to get that hinge started. And then once that's started, you can take your thumb and move it up the rest of the way to get that motherboard clear. So like I said, there we go. I'm going to move this thing up. And that's enough to get it started. Then take my thumb, push that thing up here so it's clear of the motherboard. And now I'm going to remove three motherboard screws. They're all three in the middle there. There's kind of the big, big flat one and then two small silver ones. And once I've done that, I can take the motherboard out of the chassis here. And there's that jack. And you can see that top left pin has discoloration just from voltage and power going through that thing over time. So you can tell the jack is bad by looking at it. 
And now we're going to desolder and remove that old broken jack on there. This is another better angle now, which is now the bottom right voltage pin that you plug in from the, what you see on the outside is that little pin and it goes back into this box and is soldered directly to the board and it just kind of breaks down over time. So I'm going to add some flux here to get the solder flowing. I like to add flux and solder first when I'm doing the removal instead of just going straight in with the braid. I feel this really helps break up that old existing solder inside there and is much makes the whole process much easier to get the jack out. So here I'm going to add some solder. I'm using a Hako FX Triple Eight D, running at around 750 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm using a chisel style tip, which I think works the best for these power jacks. And as you can see, the solder doesn't even want to adhere to that. It's just kind of physically, physically broken up on that voltage pin. Can't even really get the solder to go onto it. But that's not a problem, this repair will clear that whole issue up. Once you get a new jack into there and clean up that hole with the solder and everything, it'll be like new again. And so here I'm just taking my desoldering braid and I'm removing that solder and flux that we just put on there. It just aids so much in the process by doing that flux and solder first. But as you can see that solder just to suck up into the braid. I'm kind of holding that chisel tip at an angle over it to get as much surface area as possible. Um, that's why those pointy tips don't really work too well. You know, you're getting like no surface area for that through hole to kind of get some heat through it. And then in turn, the solder will suck up into the braid. And sometimes if you don't have an, a hot air station like I'm about to use, you know, you just have to repeat this process a couple times until it looks like that first top left pin there. You can see, you know, pretty much all the, you can see the air gap, all that solder has been removed on the top left pin. And that thing's you know really good and, and nice and free and ready to remove. And that bottom left one, as you can see, that solder hasn't come all the way out. You can still see some of it kind of stuck down in there. So you can either use a hot air station station to kind of finish the job, or I would suggest if it doesn't come off the first time, go back and add flux and solder again and just use that braid. Um, there's been times where it just doesn't go on the first try, so you have to do it again. So I'm trying to take every angle, you know, with these jacks, they're kind of little rectangles and your chisel tip is kind of a little rectangle too. So you can kind of touch that jack on all sides to see if you can get a good spot for that solder to come out. And, you know, a lot of times it's easier said than done. This is definitely the hardest part of the repair is the removal or desoldering process of that jack. This is where a lot of people get stuck and get help. And, and this is a service that I offer for $69 parts and labor, for example, on a Chromebook R11 laptop. And so now I'm going to go to the air soldering station. I just put some thermal tape over these vital components just to be be safe and make sure nothing gets blown away. And I set the hot air usually to around 400 degrees. And with these ones, these thin motherboards with these small jacks, you know, they come up pretty quickly. Or the, the job is done. You don't have to hold it on there for too long. Um, I don't even have to speed it up or anything. So it comes off pretty quick, as you'll see here. And with my other hand, I'm just taking those tweezers and kind of feeling it out. And you'll be able to see the solder flowing on those through holes that still have some left. As you can see right there, it's starting to melt, and then you know, it goes really quick here. So there we go. We got the jack out, and now it's time to remove that existing solder that's still in there. And I'm kind of going to go back to the same process again as the first process, first step, rather. And you just want to add flux and solder to that thing and that'll just help get all the solder out of there. So I'm just gonna go at it without putting you know, new flux and solder on there to see how it goes. And it can very well work without it, but sometimes it just aids in that removal. And flipping the motherboard over too can really help. You can kind of get at it from a different, different spot, different side. 
but as you can see in the top right corner there, that's what our end goal is. We want that thing to have all the solder removed, and you can see that very clearly there. So it looks like I'm going to go add some more flux to this thing. I gave up quick there. And this is always, in my opinion, a must. You might as well just go over it with some solder. You might as well go over it with flux. This is going to make your life easier. The less time you hold that soldering iron on the motherboard, the better. And just really aids in the removal process. And so I'm just trying to get that chisel tip down inside that through hole as best I can. And it's not working too great, so I'm going to go with the solder here. Just adding that solder really breaks everything up and really gets everything flowing, which I think this is going to do the trick. There we go. So now all the solder is coming out of that one. Just cleaning up that one I already got done. Just making sure everything's out. I think there's just a teeny bit left. And that one's coming up nicely too. And just got the last hole, which I'm going to add some solder to both of these here. And as you can see, that really helped. Just adding that solder helps break up that existing solder in there and, and gets it out much easier. So there we go. All the solder is removed from the through holes. And so here I'm just taking some 99% alcohol. I like to get that flux off of there. I'll just take that on both sides and just clean it up nicely. And here I'm just taking a picture real quick of that that jack that's been desoldered and I'm trying to get you a close up if I can get my camera to work properly here. As you can see, it's time to upgrade, I think, for these YouTube videos. And there we go. There's a good shot. All that solder removed. And you can see the one that pin that's discolored is quite a bit better now. And the solder is going to flow in there after we cleaned it up. And it's almost kind of like tinning it. It just gets that, that carbon buildup or that degradation gone. And so now I got that jack inserted in there. And be careful with this one. There's two different kinds of jacks that would fit into this thing, and one has pins that are a little bit higher up on the jack, and one has pins that are a little bit lower. And for the R11, you need to make sure you have the one with the pins on the on the top of the jack, or else when you get it back together, it's not going to fit properly. You you won't be able to get that power cord to go in. It'll be blocked off by the chassis. And so here I'm just putting that jack back in. Yeah, I got so much solder out of the holes that it just kind of falls out so I'm putting my little plier cutters underneath here to try to make it flush with the with the board and with the power jack so that that little cutter just makes it makes it stay flush but you can use anything obviously that will fit underneath that jack and here I'm going to add some more flux again uh, that'll help make that solder flow properly through the through hole. And don't worry if you splash a little bit of solder on that side. Um, we can just clean it off when it's done here. It's just so close to that uh, part of the motherboard that you really can't avoid it most of the time. Lots of boards are like that but it's no big deal. Just take your desoldering braid and clean it up. So here I'm just trying to make sure I really get that solder flow through the voltage pin and all the holes for that matter. So now I'll just take my braid, just clean up that little spot. And 
And again, I'm going to take my 99% alcohol, get this thing nice and cleaned up. And the power jack is all set to go, ready to reassemble and put back together. As you can see, that bottom right voltage pin is much better, no more discoloration. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a question, just leave it in the comment.